Hey everybody. Um, so today we're making, we got some Herman Oak Veg and we're going to be making a, like a tool holster thing for Keelina who's behind the camera all the Hi. time. Um, her partner is a tile mason and he needs a new uh, belt tool thing. I don't know what they're called, but we're going to wet mold it because when you make this kind of thing, you want to reduce the stitching as much as possible. So we're not going to do gussets. We're going to do wet molding. And I have already made the molds really quick, so let's look at those and we'll get to it. So I'll put in some pictures of what, um, what Dust uses right now, and uh, he kind of gave us that to work off of. So we took some measurements and stuff, and then I made these quick molds, and this is just out of three quarter inch plywood. Um, all the tools he uses are fairly flat, so we don't need a lot of room, we want to keep it low profile. And all I did was just, I actually just didn't, I didn't even use a jigsaw, I just used a chop saw and then sanded the corners. Um, you can go as crazy with these as you want. You can round over the edges, you can make them out of hardwood so you can reuse them. But since we're really only going to make one of these, um, this is actually one of our old workbench tops. We replace them every couple of years. And I keep the plywood around because they're already coated in um, polyurethane. So if I ever need to make special wet molds, they work really well for like one or two time use. And you could actually just cover them in polyurethane again on the edges and you could use them over and over again. So we have the main body here, uh, the first pocket, and then these two small pockets are gonna go on top of this pocket. Um, we're gonna make these two out of five ounce, which is this stuff right here. And then I'm going to attempt to make these out of like eight ounce, um, which I may or may not be able to do. This leather is pretty, feels pretty, um, doesn't feel very super dry, so I should be able to get this done. So let's get to wet molding. So next day, and everything's pretty much dry, so we have our 7 8 ounce leather for the main body pieces, and then the little pockets came out really nice in the like the 5 6 ounce range. So I'm just going to take all these thumbtacks off. Again, it's not the best way to do it, but it's just the way that I usually do it, and we'll start assembling everything. First thing we're going to do, um, we don't need this mold anymore, and I'm going to trim up these pieces, but what we're going to do is we're kind of going to build this like an upside down pyramid, so we have to do everything on the top first. So I'm going to get these trimmed up, and then we're going to install them onto this pocket, then we're going to install this pocket onto this pocket, and then we can install the whole body assembly onto just a flat back piece with the belt loop after that. So I'm going to go around and finish all these edges because basically, excuse me, um, the next step is going to be to get these attached. It is going to be tight, but that's by design right here. And we have to get the edges finished before we do that. So I'm just going to bevel and burnish everything per usual. So I burnished these up. Um, they're not, I use, just use water, so this will dry. It looks a little untidy now. We're also gonna oil the whole thing. 
Um, before we start getting this stuff attached to our second, our middle pocket, I need to trim up the middle pocket because once we have these sewn on, we're not going to be wanting. We're not going to want to be cutting all this stuff. So I'm just going to basically do the same thing again. Um, it's going to be a little more difficult since this is like eight ounces, eight ounce leather. But what I what I do personally on wet molding stuff like wet molded stuff like this, which is going to be used, um, it's obviously we're not making a piece of high fashion stuff here. So what I do is I just use my when I'm wet molding, I like to use my sharpie marker to make an indentation because I find that that gives me the perfect seam. And then once it's dry, I can just trim this seam and that's pretty much it. And the stitch goes in here, it gives a nice seam if we're gonna put some um, some rivets in. So I'm just gonna trim this up, get the, flat, the top straightened out, and then we should be ready to attach these to this. So once we have this all trimmed up, I'm gonna put it back on our mold because we are gonna be using the mold as our hammering surface to punch all of our holes. Now keep in mind, this is wood. It's not good all the time to hit your stitching chisels into wood. Um, we usually use our pounding pad, but for one or two projects, every once in a while, it's not too, too bad. So first thing I'm gonna do is measure all this out. I'm gonna use basting tape to attach the pockets, not glue, so that if I have to reposition something, I can do that because this isn't permanent. So we have our first little holder sewn onto the body. Um, it's not perfectly straight as you can see, but that's okay. This is gonna be used out in the field and um, it'll still work great. So I have these little tiny pop rivets. Um, I'm gonna pop rivet the corners of all the pockets, which is why I left this seam wide, um, just for a little extra strength. So now that we have this piece done, we're ready to do our last sort of uh, wet molded joint here. Basically the same thing again, I'm gonna burnish these edges, stick this down, and just kind of stitch around and rivet the outside. And then we're ready to do the back end. So this is eight ounce leather and eight ounce leather. We're, I'm gonna be punching through 16 ounces of leather. This tape will not as much as I want to use it because it's super easy, 
that's not going to stand up to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some glue, uh, barge cement, weldwood, whatever you like using. And I'm going to glue around the edges here. And we got to do this kind of quick because what I'm going to do, and obviously, I mean, you can tell to this point, I'm not really, you know, lining things up, making sure they're perfect right angles or anything. I'm kind of just putting it together, having fun with it. It might look a little sideways or not totally right, but it's going to be a tool that's going to be used all the time. So it's going to get pretty beat up, which is why I'm just kind of having fun with it and throwing it all together. So what I'm going to do is, now that I have my glue, I'm going to go over to my big piece that's on the mold. I'm going to put it pretty much where I want it. And I'm going to set it down, press a little bit, and pull up. Now I have a line of glue, a line that I can follow, and if you don't get it all, you can come over and do it again. So now I have a line that I can go in with my glue, and I can glue around, and when they both dry, we can put them together, we know everything's going to line up. So when you're stitching through, or when you're punching through, this is two layers of eight ounce leather, 16 ounces total. You're probably not gonna be able to get your entire stitching iron through without like really hammering it in there and then you're gonna have to try to like yank it out. It's a mess. So what you can do is, um, I just hammered in all my marks. I didn't go all the way through. I'm just using a standard diamond prigging all. And I'm punching because this is kind of a not my nice all. Um, I'm just punching right into the plywood, but you can put it into your stitching pony and punch sort of sideways through as well. And what I'm doing is I'm just going in with my awl and I'm finishing the punch through and you'll be able to see on this side, see the punches are gonna go all the way through now. So you don't need to, you know, when you're using real thick leather like this to 16 ounces total, don't even try to like hammer this all the way in. It's just gonna be a really hard time. So once we have our rivets in, we're pretty much done with our wet molds and we have our kind of pyramid built up. So now we just have to glue this to a backing. I'm gonna use more eight ounce leather. It's just gonna be flat. And then I'm actually not gonna do the strap yet because we have gotta figure out where it's gonna lay on the belt. Um, it's gonna hang from the belt, um, but it's gonna be, there's enough space where I should be able to rivet in a strap with some snaps after this is all sewn together. So the original wet mold for the body piece, which is this, is six inches wide. And once we do all the wet molding and we've sewn all this and all sorts of stuff, it's all, it's gonna be deformed, right? So what I've done is my back piece is six and a half inches wide. And instead of just taking this and gluing it onto a piece of leather and trimming it after, I'm doing it this way because I wanna suck everything in and bring it back to shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this piece of paper and remember, we're using contact cement, so this is dry to the touch now on both sides. And I'm gonna lay my paper down so that I can slowly start attaching this because as you're gonna see in a second, um, we're gonna have to sort of muscle this back into place because of all the work we've done, wet molding, etc. So you can see this is like a half inch too far, but we're, we should be able to get it where we want it to be. And what the paper is doing, obviously, is just preventing 
the glue from sticking like down here where we don't want it to because we're going to work our way towards the bottom. And after we get about halfway, like I've been doing with everything else, where is it? There we go. Um, I'm going to use my bone folder to really get down in there and do my best to get that glue stuck together. And then we'll pull this out and we'll do a little bit more. Do our best to maneuver this into place and stick it down. And so our last bit of stitching, we've got to stitch around the entire outside, which is another two layers of eight ounce. So it's about 16 ounces total. So just like the last time, this looks sketchy because I'm hammering straight into uh, the, the granite, but there is no possible way I'm going to get this all the way through with a couple of taps. I'm just going to mark with uh, my stitching chisels, and then I'm going to punch all the way through with my all one hole at a time just because I kind of have to. It's too thick to slam this thing all the way through and get it to look okay. Okay, so I lied and I can get all the way through. Luckily I did not damage my stitching chisels. So um, it's way easier to use the stitching chisels than go through each individual one with an awl, so I'm just gonna go through and punch them all. I didn't think I could get through leather this thick, but these little chisels, man, they, they're worth their weight. So we have everything stitched up. We're going to use the uh, power edge slicker to sand down these edges. They're pretty even, but um, it's like 16 ounces and I don't want to do it by hand. So luckily I can put it on like a glove and just kind of go to town on it. So we need to make um, the strap that will attach to the body of this and then loop over a belt. Um, that's the style that he likes. So I drew up this uh, pattern really quickly just by hand and I'm going to cut it out and then cut it out of leather.
So we have the, um, the belt strap thing. So we're gonna end up putting two snaps in right here and then it just kind of goes over your belt or your belt goes through there. Um, but first I put all the pop rivets in. We're using bigger ones for this cause it's structural and we're gonna just go install those now. So the last step, we're gonna install, we need a way to attach this to a belt. So I'm gonna do two, these are our custom line 24 snaps we had Scoville make many years ago. And um, you have to order a bunch of them when you have them made, so we have plenty. Um, so it'll just be a little bit of our logo, and this is gonna fold down. So I just have to punch the holes, I've already marked them out, and then we'll install them. And here we go. So this was a really big project, um, a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be, uh, but it came out really beautiful, I think. Um, I've never done so much wet molding just stacked on top of itself like this, almost like a cake. Um, and the way it attaches, super simple, but super strong. And I talk about this a lot, but again, the big thing is if anything needs to be replaced, so if this part wears out, we just cut the rivets, put on a new part. You know, um, I have the mold, so if anything, the one thing I'm a little worried about is as you put tools in and out, you know, a lot of these are just riveted without the stitching. So we're just going to see how long the stitching lasts, but we can always restitch it. Um, but I think hopefully it'll, it'll perform well in the field. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.